Warning, the audio input level should be at 8. Okay, you're ready on set. 10 seconds. Best intention. Test vibration. Six. Five. Okay, fade to black. Three. All last Tuesday, all the time. Mm. I'm Cookie Masterson, and these muffins are to die for. One player. All right, this is going to be a party. And our wrong answer of the game is brought to you by Hawaii Hell's Lava Lamp Shades. We don't make your lava lamp, we make your lava lamp better. All right, let's move. Kicking things off, hockey porks. I hate Canadian bacon, partly because it's misleading, but mostly because it's just second-rate ham. Let's call a spade a spade, Canada. Let's say I, for some strange reason, want to make a Canadian BLT. If I want to have a slice of Canadian <coughs> ham for every Canadian province and territory, how many slices will I need? 13 slices of Canadian, it's ham! 16 slices of Canadian, it's definitely ham! 19 slices of Canadian, not even good ham! Or 22 slices slices of Canadian ham, not bacon! Time to... Oh, this question may have tricked you. Kind of like that time Canada tricked me with their breakfast meats. Ah! Correct answer, show yourself. Canada is made up of 10 provinces and three territories. And one large island made entirely out of moose jerky. <laughs> Here we have a seasonal crush. If I were to spend 500 days of summer with Zoe De Chanel, roughly how many consecutive summers would we have together? 4.2 consecutive summers, 5.4 consecutive summers, 6.1 consecutive summers, or 7.3 consecutive summers? Watch your clips. This is not an adorable answer. Oh, you're gonna kick yourself. With approximately 92 days of the summer season, Zoe would have about 5.4 consecutive summers with me. I just hope it goes better than the seven days, six nights I had with Anne Heche. Next. Dude, it's not the Pleistocene anymore. Imagine a sequel to Ice Age called After the Ice Age, the 21st Century. Because his species had been around since the Ice Age and still exists, what new character could accurately be in the film? Saul the Snowshoe Hare, Gary the Ground Sloth, Morris the Woolly Mammoth, or Bruce the Giant Beaver? If you think you've seen an enormous beaver, then it was most likely a bear. <laughs> Smart people choose this. The snowshoe hare was around during the Ice Age and is still found in parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin. They're found there because Minnesota and Wisconsin are actually still in the Ice Age. And on its way, Horton hears a cordon bleu. And this is a delicious dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's the name of a Dr. Seuss character or a type of cheese. If it's Dr. Seuss, press the square button. If it's a cheese, press your circle button. Get one right, and yes, 300 bucks, the cat and his hat are yours. Get one wrong, and your score will start to stink. Don't forget to keep your eye on the clock. Answer quickly, and you'll be rewarded with mad cheddar. Ready? Let's go. Corleggi. Flustered. Munch Hunch. Wensley Dick. Gavine. Strudel. Juricampo. Sure, a person's a person no matter how small. And you are a person. A totally mediocre one, but a person nonetheless. <laughs> Dr. Seuss, of course, was just a pen name. His real name was Dr. Limburger Seuss. True fact. Where's the bomb girl? Rock my world girl. Ooh, yeah. 
Coming up. Damn, I wish I wasn't your lover. Suppose Bill and Hillary Clinton are playing Name One of VH1's 100 Greatest Songs of the 90s, where they take turns yelling out a song from the list. What would they not yell at each other? Bitch, creep, idiot, or loser? Haha, <laughs> loser. <laughs> Want to see the answer? On VH1's Top 100 Songs of the 90s list, there are the songs Bitch by Meredith Brooks, Creep by Radiohead, and Loser by Beck, but no idiot. Another acceptable answer, thanks to Fiona Apple, would have been criminal. That'll bring an end to our first round. But you couldn't tell that by looking at your score. Remember, in round two, every question is worth double. And remember, the wrong answer of the game is still there for the taking. All right, you ready? Too bad. And now, Calcutta her a break. I miss Mother Teresa. She was always healing the sickly, feeding the hungry, and I like how she looked exactly like Yogi Berra in drag. That woman was a saint. In fact, if the Catholic Church decides to make Mother Teresa a saint using her actual first name, what will she be known as? Saint Helen, Saint Teresa, Saint Agnes, or Saint Ides? Where's that confounded right answer? Mother Teresa's real name was Agnes Gansha Bajaksu. Yeah, probably would have gone by Teresa myself. And the church really does think about marketability when they name saints. St. Francis of Assisi, one of the most popular Catholic saints, was actually born Frank Pudding Pop McDonkey Pants. <laughs> Much like Mount St. Helens, this choice really blew. <laughs> but want to know something that doesn't blow? Your new lava lampshade from Hawaii Hal's Lava Lamp Accessories. For when you want your mind blown, just not as much. This wrong answer of the game nets you a handsome 8,000 bucks. Yeah, you're welcome. Question Next up. Hey guys, come on back. Which college mascot finds it physically impossible to slap his teammates a high five after a victory? Brown University's Bruno the Bear, University of Wisconsin's Bucky Badger, Bucknell University's Bucky the Bison, or Oregon State's Benny the Beaver? Bucky the Bison only has two toes per foot, so there will be no celebratory high five for him. There will also be no celebratory high-fiving for him because he's the mascot for Bucknell University. Blood and chickens picking out a mate. Oh. Guess I'll marry eight. I call this one, I know trash when I see it. Well, an intern has just dumped another pile of trash in my Bruno Molly shoes. Must be time for another installment of Send In Your Trash. Look at this. Okay, let's see what we have here. A smoking jacket, a deed to a mansion built in 1927, and a framed copy of the First Amendment. Whose trash is it? Howard Stern's, Larry Flint's, Antonin Scalia's, or Hugh Hefner's? You've been hustled. Ready for this? Yeah, Hugh Hefner is known for his trademark smoking jacket, various mansions, and his reliance on the First Amendment to make his big bucks. Man, look at all these little bits of rubber in his trash. <laughs> oh, Hugh must have had himself an epic water balloon fight. This one's known as, the TV is staring at me. CBS has been a television station for over 80 years now, which leads me to think, if the aging CBS Eye logo starts to develop cataracts, what would it look like? It would be bloodshot, it would have small red bumps, it would... Cataracts are a condition where the proteins in your eyes start to clump together and form a cloudy surface over the lens. 
and CBS's core demographic should know all too well what that experience is like. Hold me, never let me go. And my Here's a good one. A t-shirt of mythical proportions. Suppose your Ed Hardy t-shirt with a Hydra monster on it fits too tight. According to Greek mythology, if a sleeve ripped and cut off one of the Hydra's heads, what would happen? Two glittery heads would grow in its place? In Greek mythology, the Hydra was a serpent-like nine-headed monster who grew two heads for every one that was chopped off. I heard that for every Ed Hardy t-shirt you burn, three more grow in its place, and they have even more stupid sh** drawn all over them than the original. <laughs> Brace yourself for the attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 4,000 bucks if you're right, 4,000 gone if you're wrong, and most importantly, Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Spoiler alert, these all ended in a twist. Good luck. There it is! Wow, that was quite a game you played. I don't do this for every player, but for you I can make an exception. <laughs> I actually do that for all the players. You don't know Jack! Good game, everyone. Donnie, what's next? Okay, give me a piece if you'd like to engage in another tourniquet of wits. Have you ever felt like a real bore at a party? Then how about a class at Gill's Celebrity Voice Emporium? I have had years of experience tutoring people to sound like other people. With my program of just six easy classes, you'll soon be making quite the impression! I can finally mimic celebs just like the rest of my friends. Hey, I'm Ed Burns. Or what about this one? Hey, I'm Skeet Ulrich. Impersonate anyone. It's easy once you know the secret. Listen up. Hi, I'm Rosie Perez. And remember, sign up now! Go ahead, make my day! So, uh, thanks again for having me over, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, Marjorie. <laughs> um, so... Is your date night conversation a bore? Yes, yes it is. Please help. We have nothing to talk about. Then try Nigel the Chimney Sweep. He's a real adorable British street urchin who makes an excellent conversation piece. Oh, well, isn't he fabulous? All ragged and covered in soot. Oh, please, miss, help me. I have a family. They don't know where I am. Please help. <laughs> oh, I haven't the slightest what he's saying, but look at that adorable hat. And you, Scott. Well, you seem so... so nurturing. Thanks, Marjorie. Please, please, I miss me mum. Why am I dressed like this? Get your very own Nigel the Chimney Sweep today so he can start sweeping your loved ones into your heart. Help me! Or heart. Help me! Hello, I'm Senator Bruce Stegmeyer. 
I'm hard on crime, and I approve this cartoon bonus sound. Monica, I have cherished every day I've spent with you. You are the love of my life. Will you marry me? Oh, Charles, of course. And what a unique ring. Is that a... Gallstone? Yes, it's mine. I wanted to give you something symbolic of my love for you, so I had the hardened excess bile that my gallbladder produced forged into your ring. How romantic. It's perfect. And you're perfect. I would have had a lot of gall to say no. On the contrary, love. On the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, that gallstone was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced. The You've Got Gall Gallstone Jewelers, when giving her a piece of your heart, isn't enough. I like your hoodie. Where'd you get it? Pack Sun. Oh, where's there a Pack Sun? I don't know. My mom drove me. This exchange has been brought to you by the Council for Overheard Tween Conversations. Whatever happened to Hootie and the Blowfish? Find out tonight. We need it bad. Okay, sweethearts, here's a candy bar from the supermarket. <laughs> That's not gonna cut it, Mommy. Hey, kids, I got what you're looking for. Lil Smacky! Whoa, hey, you don't need to announce it to the world. Okay, you want the highest quality candy contraband available? Yeah, I got your choice high concentration fruit chews. I got your malted milk balls, imported from Mexico. I got the finest sugar tots you've ever seen in powdered form. Wow, it's so fun! Whoa, hey, look with your eyes, kid. Need accessories? We got tons of pipes, pieces, and candy bongs for when, uh, your little lungs have a big sweet tooth. We'll take it all. Susie, take mommy's purse. Hey. Pleasure doing business, kids. And remember, share your juice, share your dolls, but never share your candy needles. We love little Smackies. Candy con-